Good afternoon, everyone. Dear colleagues, a warm welcome to this next part of our AFET meeting today. Colleagues, we will now focus once more on our relations with Africa, which reflects the importance our committee gives to the political, security and economic relations between Africa on the one hand and Europe on the other hand. We will first hold an exchange of views on Tanzania, followed by an exchange of views on the situation in Ethiopia. I would like to give a warm welcome to our guest speakers, Ms. Rita Laranjina, the Managing Director for Africa at the European External Action Service. It is once again a pleasure to welcome you, Ms. Laranjina, in front of our committee. Moreover, I would like to also welcome Monsieur Didier Vers, Head of Unit for Eastern and Central Africa from DG INTPA. Colleagues, last month, to be precise, on the 13th of October, I met in my office here in Brussels, Mr. Tundu Lissu. For those of you who might not know him, Tundu Lissu was presidential candidate and challenged former President Magafuli in the 2020 Tanzanian general election. In 2017, he survived an assassination attempt and he now lives currently in Belgium. Mr. Tindulisu, however, is not the only one who was forced to leave Tanzania. Opposition politician, God bless Lima, for example, also had to flee and has been granted asylum in Canada. Ms. Laranjina, Mr. Vers, dear colleagues, I must say that I am deeply concerned about the human rights situation and the shrinking of civic space in Tanzania. Since 2015, this country has been sliding towards an authoritarian regime with restrictions in the political space, civil society and media to cost for democracy, rule of law and human rights. Moreover, Tanzania is also affected by regional insecurity. There is instability in the Horn of Africa, the Great Lakes region and the Indian Ocean. And there are the risks of spillover from the Islamist surge in northern Mozambique. Dear Ms. Laranjinia, we have held an exchange of views on Tanzania in this committee in November 2020, right after the elections took place on the 28th of October last year. Now, one year later, I'm interested to hear the assessment of the European External Action Service on the political situation in the country after the death of former President Magafuli and under the new President, Ms. Samia Saluhu Hassan. Further, the detention of Mr. Freeman Mbove remains a major concern. Mr. Mbowe has been in prison since July the 21st when he was arrested along with a number of other senior opposition officials just hours before they were about to hold a public forum to demand constitutional reforms in their country. I was also informed that last Sunday the government, due to terrorism threats, prohibited a meeting of the opposition party Chadima. However, the responsible authorities didn't raise the terrorism threat level. Obviously, the reasons stated by the police force could be considered as unfounded. Ms. Langinia, what are the activities of the European External Action Service on these kind of matters? And how is the EAS supporting constitutional changes in Tanzania, which is the only way that will guarantee freedom, justice, peace and security. And finally, the deterioration of the rule of law and the independence of judiciary is alarming. Freedom of association expression is very limited. In spite of this situation, the IMF approved in September 567.25 million US dollar in emergency support to Tanzania to address the pandemic and said that Tanzanian authorities have committed to strengthen governance and transparency. So in this context, I would like to ask you how much money the European Union is currently spending and how 
this spending is monitored, scrutinized, and in the end, justified. So I would like to give you the floor first for 10 minutes, then to Monsieur Didier Vers, and then I will give the floor to a number of members as appearing on the speakers list. Once again, Ms. Larangina, warm welcome. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, and uh, uh, thank you for this opportunity for this exchange with the European Parliament. As you've said, we have discussed Tanzania uh, almost one year ago, and uh, 2021 has been a year of profound changes uh, for Tanzania. I hear your concerns, but I think that there are also reasons for optimism. The exchange of views is uh, therefore very timely. It is very important for us so that we can exchange notes and um, exchange on our reading of the situation. As you said, the country emerged from elections in October 2020. These elections raised concerns. In March 2021, uh, President Magufuli uh, passed away. The Vice President, uh, Samia Sulu Hassan, took over, according to the Constitution, without unrest. Unquestionably, it was a remarkable feat in this region. In these last uh, months, we have witnessed what we consider a positive beginning for President Samia, domestically and internationally. Uh, President Samia has um, adopted conciliatory messages of appeasement to civil society. Uh, she has been, uh, we consider, uh, discreet and effective. She has avoided uh, populist messaging. She has introduced some changes in government. Uh, she is consolidating her political position of engagement, her term going until 2025. And we have to recall that she took office only March last year in exceptional circumstances. March this year, sorry. Um, so domestically, we see some uh, changes that we consider that uh, move towards more tolerance for freedom of expression that enables the media to be more outspoken. NGOs admit to feeling less pressure. The measures announced and the cooperative tone have been received positively by the international community and by the civil society in Tanzania. President Semi has also shown leadership and commitment to advance gender policies. She has made high-level appointments. Uh, several women have been uh, um, appointed as notably ministers of foreign affairs and minister of defense. A policy of late President Magufuli, which required pregnant girls and young mothers to stop attending school, was recently overturned. There has been also a 180-degree turn internationally. President Samia swiftly visited neighbours in Kenya, Rwanda and Uganda and joined two SADC summits. She attended the UN General Assembly, COP26, and she recently visited Egypt. On the important front against violent extremism that you referred to, which appears to increase dramatically in the region after the Kampala attacks, the lingering threats from Kalb Delgado insurgents and from Al-Shabaab in Somalia, President Samia is also bringing much needed openness and avenues for collaboration. Contributing to the SADC mission in Cabo Delgado, but also publicly acknowledging the need for civil society and media to play a role in the fight against terrorism. On COVID-19, Tanzania moved from being an outlier in denial of the gravity of the pandemic to a partner that engages in a prevention and vaccination campaign, sharing still basic epidemiological data and with the ambition to develop vaccines and medicines. A positive situation is also seen in Zanzibar, where important where Zanzibar that has important evolved powers and an autonomous government. In spite of the electoral violence in the islands, the CCM candidate who was declared winner made a coalition government with the opposition party, ACT Wazalendo. The coalition has been upheld despite some challenges. Stability in Zanzibar is crucial for Tanzanian stability and local grievances can also have broad connections and repercussions across the Muslim East Africa coast. Despite the progress made, there are still some shortcomings, namely regarding multi-party democracy and political and civic freedoms, as you have highlighted.
Pluralism and multi-party democracy stalled in the national parliament. The October 2020 elections led to a national parliament in Dodoma with 20, 97% of elected members from the ruling party CCM. There is no representation of the political opposition compared to the previous cycle. The main opposition party Chadema refuses to accept the election results. The chairman of Chadema remains in prison, as you have said, since July, accused of financing terrorism and other serious charges. This judicial process is ongoing and the EU, together with its member states and other members of the international community, follows closely, including through attendance to some of the court sanctions. The situation has certainly an impact in the national political environment. We will continue to follow this closely and you are are well aware of an exchange of letters between yourself and uh, HRVP Borrell specifically on this issue. We, um, President Sami announced she would meet with the opposition parties for dialogue months ago and this meeting has not materialized yet, which we consider a setback. During the universal periodic review of Tanzania in Geneva in November, many pertinent questions were simply noted and not accepted by the government of Tanzania. The need to progress on issues of human rights and fundamental freedom is clear. The legal environment still remains restrictive. After the many policies entrenched during the Magufuli rule, are kept. This affects media and civil society and business. Although the atmosphere is more relaxed, it, this restrictive legislation is still in place and the supporters of the hard line across the administration and of the ruling party CCM maintain some influence. In the course of the past months, they, we had an opportunity for a constructive re-engagement between EU and Tanzania. The President of the European Council has been in touch with President Samia over the phone and also in the margins of the Junga. This high-level re-engagement has also been very important as it signals the will to be constructive, to cooperate on both sides and also to share messages of those issues in which we are still concerned. Tanzania and the EU held a session of political dialogue on the 29th of October, the first in many years, which I co-chaired together with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Liberata Mula Mula, in Dar es Salaam, and also in presence of the Minister of Defence. In this dialogue, we were able to discuss many topics. The first topic on the agenda was democracy and human rights, and we highlighted our concerns. We also... Um, discussed issues related to economic and development cooperation, regional security and multilateral topics. The dialogue was friendly, constructive. We issued a joint communique that mentions our agreement to hold political dialogue every year, which would be a welcome change and which will be an occasion for us to continue to pass on our messages of support and of concern. Regarding human rights and elections, we specifically mentioned the recommendations from the Electoral Observation Mission of 2015 and the Tanzanian authorities were open to cooperate on this with us. Regarding trade, there was an agreement to hold a technical discussion on the prospects of the eu AAC economic partnership agreement. On security, we encouraged further cooperation between the EU and Tanzania as there are grounds for common interests in the region and the EU is already offering support, for example, to SADC and actively intervening in Cabo Delgado. We also discussed openly the situation of COVID-19. During my visit to Tanzania, I also met with leaders of opposition parties, including Chadema and Asiti Wazalendo. Here in Brussels, we have received uh, Chadema leader Tundu Liso. It is important to maintain communication with all possible stakeholders and we will do so. The Partnership for Development Cooperation is based on decades of cooperation where the EU and Tanzania have worked together for sustainable development across sectors. The MIP for 21-27 was presented to member states and is proceeding smoothly. My colleague Didier Verset from DG INPA will develop on this. In conclusion, Tanzania remains an important partner for the EU. 
We may not always be in full agreement, but we have regained the possibility of openly discussing our points of difference and of openly call the attention to those issues that you have rightly mentioned, Mr. Chair. We have opened up a number of important avenues of cooperation that can deliver clear results. We can now work better together in supporting a more conducive environment for investment, for developing trade, cooperating on regional and maritime security, all the while remaining a reliable development partner aligned with national objectives and committed to good governance and human rights. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Ranginia. And then I give the floor immediately to, as I just heard, your pronunciation is Didier Versé, or Didier Vers, perhaps you can say it in the beginning, but anyhow, a warm welcome to the Foreign Affairs Committee. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as already said, Tanzania is an important partner for the EU, both in view of, the, of its economic potential and the role it could play in the region, promoting peace and security and regional economic integration. The Article 8 just mentioned uh, was took place in October, whereas the last one was in 2017 and is very promising. This political dialogue has to be seen as a new departure and we'll have to work with to maintain both parts' commitment in this dialogue. Already said, the stability of the coalition government in Zanzibar now allows us to restart project in this part of Tanzania. Supporting this region and its development effort is, a, is key for the stability of the country as a whole. It's important to know that during this long period, without formal political dialogue, we have nonetheless maintained good policy dialogue, thanks to our cooperation programs and to our budget support action. Besides the political change that has been taken place, public health has become a priority. And here, as well, there has been important change in the policy. For instance, Tanzania resumed official reporting on COVID-19 in September 2021, which it had stopped in April 2022, uh, 2020. Sorry. Information on prevalence and deaths is now produced on a weekly basis, also this limited testing and capacity to face the pandemic is still being developed. Tanzania has signed up to the COVAX facility and launched an ambitious vaccination campaign. Also, vaccine hesitancy is still a problem. Up to now, around 1 million people have been vaccinated. In view of this re-engagement, as the EU does across Africa, the EU remains committed to fight against the economic and social consequences of COVID-19. The EU has have provided more than 100 million to Tanzania since the onset of the pandemic. Tanzania was not on the initial list of the southern African countries that have been indicated at high risk regarding the Omicron variant of COVID-19, but we as a Commission remain very attentive. In the current Tanzania context, Development cooperation is a means to support political change. And it is, this is the spirit that I wish to present you, the latest on multi-annual and annual programming. The four years multi-annual programs, MIP for Tanzania, will soon be adopted by the Commission for 426 million euros. It knowledge that Tanzania and the EU share a common interest in ensuring peace, security, stability, but also environmental protection and reduction of C CO2 emission in the context of the climate, global climate change, considering the new well risk of internalization of conflict, as well as migration crisis. It will support the Tanzania Five Years Development Plan 2021-2025 and the Zanzibar Development Vision 2050 on competitiveness, let's export growth, economic transformation, infrastructure linkage, human capital, governance, and resilience. The MIP priorities area are, the first one, green deals, as partnership in particular between the public and the private sectors 
to allow sustainable economic development, Green Deal will promote investment in productive sectors like agriculture, forestry, fishery and tourism, and service delivery. Adaptation to climate change and climate change-related disaster preparedness will be underlying concerning all programs. The second priority will be human capital and employment, which are central to Tanzania's development strategy and will contribute to providing individuals with education skill set, decent living condition, notably through social protection, and employment opportunity, in particular green jobs in SMEs. And the last but not least priority area is governance. We will promote platform of dialogue between the government, civil society, private sector, and we will focus on governance system for public service delivery, social accountability and the rule of law for an inclusive society, including, of course, fundamental value as human rights and democracy. Embedded in the three priorities area, two Team Europe initiatives on blue economy and system sustainable cities are being designed jointly with EU member states and development finance institutions with the view to have a transformational impact on Tanzania during this MIP. The annual action plan 2021 for Tanzania is ambitious and aimed at promoting Tanzania and the EU common interest in protecting the environment and reducing greenhouse gas emissions, in particular in cities. Three specific actions will be developed. The first action is green and smart cities for 75 million euros. It will promote green and smart cities to the benefit of their communities and businesses. It should help creating an enabling regulatory and policy environment for cities to promote an inclusive economy, especially for women and youth. We will support more resilient cities thanks to improved service to urban poor communities and to the use of the relevant digital solution. All that should support sustainable growth and local economy in selected cities. Action number two is gender transformative change program, breaking the glass ceiling for 70 million euros. This action will focus on transformative change for all six gender action plan, three priorities, from the high-level policy dialogue with the government to the grassroots level, through different complementary actions focusing on government policy, legal and institutional reform, and enforcement, including the local level and the promotion of the behavioral change. The last action is Tanzania Net. 35 million euro. We will focus on the transformative impact digitalization can bring to Tanzania. We want to support the acceleration of financial inclusion and of the use of financial technology, the expansion of connectivity within the country while reinforcing the level of data protection and cybersecurity and the adoption of an implementation of e-government strategy. Let me to mention that real opportunities now exist for the private sector. The three programmes of the AAP 2021 will support the private sector directly or by helping the development of a business-friendly environment. For this purpose, we will use the new tools at our disposal under the European Fund for Stability Development Plus, what we call the EFSD Plus. Let me to conclude that Tanzania is a key in the region and is showing positive economic and political trends in the context of continuing stability. I'm aware that, the new, that not everything sorry, is perfect in Tanzania, that the human rights situation is a concern, as well as the situation of the media and the civil society. But I'm sure that we can have a transform transformational impact through our partnership by helping to avoid slipping backwards, supporting the current process in Tanzania, we build for the benefit of Tanzania population. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you to 
both of you to present the situation in Tanzania. We will now have an exchange of views. We have time until roughly three o'clock, so 45 minutes maximum. I will first give the floor to our colleague Carlos Sorino for three minutes. He chairs the ACP EU Joint Parliamentary Assembly. Please. Muito obrigado, senhor. Thank you very much, Chair. And thanks also to Director Rita Laranjinha and our Commission representative for the information they shared. Last year in November, following the general elections in October, we held a debate in our effort committee where we expressed great concerns with the situation in Tanzania. We mentioned intimidation, tension, human rights violations during the elections and a review of our uh, relations with the government. We also noted the government's disastrous response on COVID-19 uh, as they alleged that that pandemic was not present in Tanzania. We've seen some signs of change. Uh, we now have a new president in Tanzania. She has announced political choices both domestically and internationally that are different to those of her predecessor. She's shown availability for dialogue with the opposition unlike what happened previously. This has raised positive expectations to move forward on basic topics such as uh, human rights, freedom of the press and political rights. The truth is that reality doesn't correspond to these very positive signals and is indeed quite disappointing. As uh, Ms. Rita Laranjinha said when she described the outcomes of the political dialogue which was held with the Tanzanian government, I'm very grateful for the information she shared and I'd like to know, given the circumstances, what the coming steps will be in terms of this dialogue because what ha so that we can see that what has been promised actually becomes a reality. That's very important. Finally, I'd like to say that I was recently in Cabo Delgado in northern Mozambique recently uh, for a delegation for the ACP uh, European Parliament delegation. And I take the opportunity to ask what you think about the situation on the Tanzanian side of the border that you touched on and how other countries can uh, contribute to bringing stability to that very tormented territory in the north of Mozambique. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Mikhail Gala for the EPP. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, just on the last point from Carlos Sorinho, uh, which uh, um, facts do we know about possible insurgency from Tanzania to Cabo Delgado? Are these uh, Islamists coming directly from there or, or what do we know and are we in contact with the Tanzanian authorities in this regard uh, because we have our training mission on the other side and perhaps we should know what goes on. Overall, I have to say I'm, I'm disappointed with the uh, what President Zuluhu Hassan thus far has um, uh, delivered uh, when it comes to uh, the improvement of the political climate in the country uh, and uh, I think uh, uh, we should be very outspoken in this regard as well. I hope we are not, so to say, as a consequence or late consequence of that our ambassador in 2018 had to leave because he was sufficiently outspoken that we are not uh, adopting a, uh, an appeasement strategy, not speaking out what needs to be told uh, on the spot. It's good to meet the opposition leader here in Brussels, but it's also good to visibly also uh, speak out against uh, uh, such behaviour, uh, and I mean uh, to uh, to uh, accuse uh, the opposition leader of, of of terrorism planning or financing. That is well déjà vu in many countries where there is not much about uh, a democracy. So I really wonder um, whether such uh, uh, problems are properly addressed also together with the other people, uh, our, our so to say, Team Europe in, in Tanzania. So what are we doing there? Also publicly, not only behind the scenes. 
Um, uh, how do you, you did not address the fact that Tanzania apparently, and it's a bit unclear whether they withdrew from the uh, Arusha-based African Court on Human and People's Rights or whether that has been formally reversed. It took effect in November last year, if I'm not mistaken. The president said, no, no, we did not withdraw, but that also has to be formalized because it was formalized uh, uh, um, before. And uh, perhaps we could engage and encourage them to stay there and also uh, uh, to reinstate the right of individuals and non-governmental organizations to directly access uh, this African court. It's, after all, based in Tanzania and has a Tanzanian president. I think that would be worthwhile uh, uh, to uh, address. Um, can we not also, within our cooperation, as we see these problems, in, when it comes to democracy, uh, uh, can we not uh, uh, use more our financial support to do it instead of the usual and easygoing uh, budget support to really focus more on projects that directly profit local populations, perhaps local authorities that behave well and uh, democratically uh, in order to set certain signals in this regard? Thank you. Thank you. Michael, Maria Arena, please. Merci. Thank you, David. Thank you for those uh, two presentations. Well, we know that Mr. Magafuli left quite a heritage when it comes to repressive actions and violating human rights. There have been a... Uh, there's been repression in respect of journalists, political opposition leaders, freedom of speech, that well-known law about the ban of pregnant uh, women or uh, children uh, working. That was lifted recently. But in short, the human rights situation in Tanzania has been grounds for serious concern. The death of Mr. Magafuli was a signal that enabled us to say that there could be a new start for the country. And I would say there's been a lot of promises that have been made. Now, at present, well, there have been perhaps a few changes. One can't say that the situation is satisfactory, anything but. So the question I would put in line with what Michael Gallo just asked, when it comes to the multi-annual programs that are being worked out with Tanzania, it would be important to be able to put a number of proposals on the table that would make it possible to see that those promises are implemented when it comes to complying with uh, human rights in the country. And this country, as we know, is rich when it comes to natural resources. It's got gold, uranium, phosphate, uh, uh, uranium, uh, all kinds of resources, not to mention agriculture, cotton, coffee. And still, with all those resources, it's running a deficit and uh, uh, Two uh, billion exports, four billion uh, euros in terms of imports. And over and beyond the aid, what can be done with a view to transformation? That is to say, industrial investment in the country to be able to see to that, we need to ensure peace and security. So, I mean, all of this is goes hand, hand in hand, industrial development, uh, human rights, and developing tour tourism. I mean, we're all concerned about COVID, but I did want to know when it comes to the new South African variant, whether Tanzania was affected by the closing of borders, which I don't think is a uh, very good idea, given what's at stake, because it's the economic development of these countries. So what it, it, uh, is their take? Tourism is vital for Tanzania. How can it survive uh, given some of these uh, drastic measures taken vis-a-vis -vis South African countries? Thank you. Thank you, Maria Arena. No request to take the floor from the Renew Group. So we move on to the Greens. Katrin Langensiepen. She's connected. The floor is yours. Yeah, herzlichen Dank. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Three areas I'd like to mention, and hearty thanks 
for those reports. When it comes to corona, the questions have already been put, and I would uh, tune in. Yes, do, what do you see happening in terms of developments? And there's the EU African Union Summit coming up. So what is Tanzania's role in your uh, point of view? What role will Tanzania play? Then two other issues, the international tourism. Well, analysis, uh, uh, there's uh, talk of a boycott when it comes to the... Uh, the military operations in the Congo that undermined the ADF. And they're looking for support from the uh, Shomati uh, rebels next door. Do you Can you give us more information on that, that there are these developments underway, and what conclusions would you draw? Do you see any signs of any commitment on the part of the government when it comes to the IS militia in the Cabo de Delgado region, when it comes to the rule of law? I mean, apparently, when it comes to the security forces and the militia, when it came to the 2020 elections and the people that were killed, according to Human Rights Watch, they uh, said the perpetrators were not taken to task. Can you confirm that? And if these allegations are true, what uh, steps would you suggest uh, taking? I would agree with my previous speakers that, yes, you should really look at this in depth. And also, when it comes to disbursements, I think we, uh, I think I'll take that view. So th thank you for your answers. Vielen Dank, Frau Kollegin. Thank you very much, Ms. Langenzippen. Final speaker on my list is Anna Fatiga for the ECR. Is Ms. Fatiga connected? Yes, then the floor is yours. Ms. Fatiga, please press the speak button at the bottom of the screen once. Thank you. Do you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Chair, and I, I would like to thank both speakers for their presentation. Uh, well, uh, sometimes I think that uh, once more it is the case of, of a bottle half full or half uh, have empty. We have to carefully assess details of uh, this situation. I must admit that uh, I am still concerned, despite uh, positive signals after peaceful uh, taking uh, power by, by by former deputy president, vice president of of Tanzania. Surely there are positive signals. Uh, um, yet, uh, the picture is that opposition, despite meetings in Brussels, opposition me uh, leaders are there in prison. And, and uh, the, the composition of the parliament is uh, extremely questionable and, and uh, putting in question possibility to... To, to maintain scrutiny of, of our projects. Therefore, I strongly support Michael Gallagher's uh, um, uh, request to, uh, to ensure eventually project, EU projects to be directly benefiting society and uh, uh, being equal to, to, to or, or, or impartial to, to, to political um, a denomination there in in, in the country. Um, I think that uh, the picture has is very uh, matter of concern. Um, uh, allegations of terrorism in a country assessed by Department of State, U.S. Department of State, or uh, many other institutions. As, let's say 
middle uh, threat in terms of, of terrorism, despite proximity to Cabo Delgado, um, I think it, it should be taken uh, into account. And my question is, uh, what tools in, in launched uh, political dialogue we use to exert pressure on the government of Tanzania to improve uh, the situation, not only sending messages, but, but what kind of pressure are we going and tools to, to use uh, to, to ensure uh, quicker uh, developments in this regard? Thank you. Thank you, Anna Fortiga. Would anybody else like to take the floor? Then please indicate now. But it's not the case here in the room, nor is it um, online. So then I will finally say a few words myself. Uh, Ms. Langinia and Mr. Verze, I have heard very carefully what you presented today. And I hear your message, but I have difficulties actually sharing your rather optimistic assessment of the situation in Tanzania. Ms. Langina, you said, despite all the positive developments apparently in Tanzania, there were, quote, some shortcomings, unquote. And Mr. Vezir, you said, not everything is perfect in Tanzania. Now, I have dealt a lot with Tanzania. I'm in contact with many brave men and women in that country. And we're still in a situation, even under the new president, where leaders, members and supporters of the opposition, something which is totally normal in democracies in Europe, but isn't normal in Africa, that members, supporters and leaders of opposition every day are facing harassment, illegal detention, intimidation and persecution. Are these really, Ms. Laranginia, some shortcomings? Question mark. Do you believe that the opposition in the moment is able to conduct their political activities uninterrupted? If yes, please describe us how. If not, what is the European Union actually doing to improve the situation apart from sending messages. Ms. Langinia, would the External Action Service share the view which many observers have shared and stated that the case against Freeman Mbui, the leader of the opposition, is politically motivated and has no legal foundation to be in the court of law? I read with interest that representatives from the American and British embassies in Dar es Salaam were present at the court trial, were also representatives of the EU present. You mentioned that you've met Tindu Lisu in Brussels as a leader of the Tanzanian opposition. Well, Mr. Lisu is in the fortunate position, or to be more precise, in the unfortunate position of having to live in Belgium. You cannot meet Mr. Mbui, the leader of Chadema, because he's in prison. So I ask you, has the European Union called upon President Saluhu Hassan to unconditionally release Freeman Mbui and other Chadema leaders detained in different prison remands forthwith? And finally, Mr. Verzi and Mrs. Ms. Laranginia, from your point of view, what are the necessary steps that can guarantee fundamental principles we as European Union fight for all over our globe, for freedom, for justice, peace and security? What steps are necessary and what are we actually doing? And especially the substantial support we as European Union give to Tanzania and this is, by the way, taxpayers' money of EU citizens, is this, as other colleagues have asked, is this connected to any kind of conditionality or are you still 
continuing business as usual, as you have done over all these years in Tanzania, and you are sending messages. I want you to answer these questions very precisely, please, because in the other case, I would once again have to write letters like after the last meeting, and I would like to avoid that. Thank you very much. The floor is yours, Ms. Larangina. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, so I, I will indeed answer as, as precisely as possible your uh, questions, but also will dwell upon the others, um, other questions that were asked by, by other members of, of Parliament. Uh, the first one, uh, Mr. Zuhingo asked what will be the next steps. Uh, the political dialogue uh, will be reconvened and uh, we will, this is already one positive uh, step since these uh, meetings who did not take place since uh, 2017 and this is a framework in which we uh, can continue to have a dialogue with um, with uh, our partners in, in Tanzania. And of course, we have a, a delegation on the ground that has uh, um, extensive uh, contacts with the, the Tanzanian authorities and we are in constant uh, uh, dialogue and we are constantly uh, collaborating, cooperating and also um, um, expressing our our concerns uh, about uh, the situation that uh, that exists in the country, I would um, uh, recall what uh, Madame Marina said. L'héritage uh, est lourd. This um, Tanzania uh, has been has gone through uh, very uh, difficult years, as you, uh, Mr. President, have, have uh, so um, brilliantly highlighted. Uh, and uh, President uh, uh, Hassan is there for eight months. Months. And, uh, and uh, so uh, we do believe in the European External Action Service that uh, indeed uh, progress uh, was made and indeed uh, shortcomings, as I mentioned, because there are difficulties. We can uh, um, uh, use uh, different words. Uh, we can say that there are problems. Uh, it's uh, still indeed. But we, we understand that, some, that progress is being made and that there is a, a, a positive uh, evolution. I, I restate uh, that we um, we have uh, also uh, been um, uh, I was also questioned on the situation in in Cap Delgado and would very much like to hear from uh, uh, Mr. Hing on his experience um, the the positive um, evolution since uh, President Samia took office is that uh, we are now able to uh, exchange with uh, the Tanzanian authorities on the situation in uh, Cap Delgado uh, uh, the Tanzanians have uh, are taking part Part in the in the Samim, so the the mission in um, the mission that uh, the SADC has uh, sent uh, to Cap Delgado, so they are actively engaged. Uh, from the conversation I had uh, last week with the Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of uh, of Mozambique, indeed among uh, the the terrorists uh, that have been uh, um, that have been uh, imprisoned in these operations, there are um, uh, Tanzanians among other nationalities, uh, and so. Uh, there are uh, indeed uh, difficulties in the, in the frontier, uh, but that now, uh, differently from the past, uh, the Tanzanians are trying to address uh, together with their um, their uh, neighbours in the region. Um, I will, um, uh, regarding uh, the questions that uh, Mr. Galler um, presented, we, we will we are not uh, um, looking for for an, an appeasement uh, strategy, but we are uh, following uh, progress made. Uh, closely. Uh, again, I say that it's been eight months, uh, and uh, and some evolution has been uh, has been taking place. Uh, and we will uh, also visibly speak out uh, when we would consider that the situation is uh, is serious. And we are um, we have done uh, we have done so in the past, and we will continue to do. And uh, together with the member states, we are. Uh, I have of course uh, engaged with uh, the member states' embassies uh, when I was in Dar, and, uh, and we are all aligned in the, this um, conviction that it is time to support uh, this uh, new government. In what regards uh, your question, um, 
uh, that has uh, to do with the, the uh, Arusha uh, court, um, what uh, happened is that Tanzania has not uh, withdrawn from the, the African Human Rights Court. It has withdrawn from one protocol with a provision whereby individuals and NGOs can directly appeal to the court. Uh, and for, fortunately, very few African countries have signed this uh, protocol. And unfortunately, uh, some uh, other African countries have withdrawn from this port protocol in the last years. So Tanzania withdrew in 2019, uh, Rwanda had withdrawn in 2016, in 2020 it was Benin and Cote d'Ivoire that also uh, withdrew uh, from this protocol. Sadly, it's uh, an African uh, trend on the advanced protection of human rights, uh, uh, but it is uh, certainly not something uh, that only has uh, to do with, uh, with Tanzania, which does not uh, mean that it is not, uh, not uh, concerning, of course. On the um, on the case uh, and uh, and the situation of uh, of the opposition, so we uh, indeed we have engaged with Mr. Tindulisu here, but we have also spoken to the opposition and we are in contact with the opposition in uh, in Dar es Salaam. I had uh, myself a meeting, as I I uh, previously indicated. Um, in the context of the Tanzanian Center for Democracy with AZT Wazalendo, with Chadema and with other parties. We had a long discussion uh, um, and uh, where uh, the, the members of the opposition could express uh, their concerns and share with us uh, their concerns, which we will, of course, uh, follow. And we have indeed, um, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, been, we have been following the, the, the court case, as uh, uh, Mr. Borrell has indicated, uh, to you in his letter on the 7th of uh, September. Since the 5th of August, a diplomat of the EU delegation and a diplomat of a member state embassy have been attending the court hear hearings concerning Mr. Mbau in order to mark the EU's attention to the case. And we will continue uh, to follow uh, the case. Um, the case, uh, uh, well, uh, we will continue to, to follow and, and to, uh, we are in close contact with, uh, with Chadema also on this. And so we will, uh, and we have been expressing uh, our, indeed our concern about uh, the, the situation. Uh, at this point, we, we are, um, uh, I, I hear from you that, that you consider that we are still uh, passing uh, messages and not taking uh, concrete actions. Uh, but we indeed believe that eight months after a new president uh, took office in Tanzania and being the situation as it was all over uh, these uh, many decades, uh, we consider that it is indeed time for dialogue and it is time to accompany Tanzania in the efforts that are being made. And we will, uh, in this dialogue, also point out to the, the remaining difficulties. And we will, of course, be happy to um, well uh, answer any any uh, detailed and more detailed questions that we, you will be willing to, to send us. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Versi. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for the very uh, uh, pertinent uh, remark. And um, we, of course, fully agree that uh, we need to support the population. And on one hand, and on the other hand, as expressed, we, we need to I don't say condition, but we need to, in, to increase the pressure on the government uh, about the human rights, the democracy, and the freedom, justice, rule of law, as you said. But you are exactly in our, our, in our dilemma, you know, on one side to, to be sure and to ensure that we, we support the population, and on the other side uh, to, to be sure that we, we maintain with our partnership instrument, that we maintain the pressure on the uh, on the government and it's what we have tried if you if you look to the AP 2021 it's what we have tried to do uh, when we speak about the green and smart cities is not only the capital it's for the uh, certain number of, of of cities outside I mean the the capital of course and it's for the the direct support to the population and the the poorest uh, communities I said on the other hand, when we speak about uh, the gender, uh, the second program, probably we will use the budget support modality. And in this budget support modality, it will be possible to, to increase and to put some indicators 
uh, on the, the women's rights, including uh, freedom uh, and, in more general, uh, generally, I mean, the, the, the human rights uh, respect. And I think it's this mix of balance that will give us the, the opportunity to, to maintain a, a strong dialogue uh, with the, the government through some budget, some budget support, and on the other hand, to support uh, the population, and especially the poorest communities, and what, as we propose in the, in the cities uh, through, the, through the country. To come back on some uh, comment from uh, Maria Arena about um, the value change in the tourism um, and, the, uh, and the industrialization, yes, of course, it is part of the, um, of, uh, of the, uh, the MIP and especially on agriculture. We will continue some, uh, some project program, as already said, but with the private sector. We want to, 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 to support the private sector and not only with the, the grants, as said, but also with the FSD plus and to, to increase the, the capacity of the commercial banks to do loan uh, to, the, to the SMEs. Uh, now on the COVID-19, as already said, uh, for the moment, uh, Tanzania is not, uh, has not been indicated as the high risk regarding the Omicron variant, but of course the European Commission will remain very attentive. But just to be clear that for the moment, uh, to date, the, the border are not, uh, are not closed. Um, and yes, uh, Mr. Chair, of course, we need to support the civil society. And when, to, to be clear, when uh, there are some elections, uh, especially in Tanzania, and, but not only the, 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 pre the next presidential election, but also the local election, we have to be there and we need to support uh, not only the, the government, of course, but the civil society and, and the, the different parties to be part of the election and to ensure uh, a fair uh, election. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. Would anyone of you like to take the floor once again? But it's not the case. Ms. Langinia, Mr. Verzi, let me thank you for your presentations. Um, I think you should take back to DG INPA and to the European External Action Service at the European Parliament is following the situation in Tanzania very closely, and we will continue to do so. And unfortunately, this will not be the last time you will be invited to the European Parliament. I could say a lot now to what the two of you have just said. Uh, I would like to just keep it here that we expect the European Union to be an active supporter of human rights, of fundamental freedoms, of opposition rights, of media freedom, also in Tanzania. And of course, it's more for more and less for less. And you say that the new president is now eight months in power, but there will come a time when dialogue will have to lead to concrete results. And especially, Ms. Laranginia, I urge you, I urge you and all representatives of the EU involved in Tanzania that you do everything to make sure that political prisoners are released from prisons because obviously these court cases are politically motivated. We expect you to be just as outspoken as others on this matter. So having said that, um, we will follow the situation very closely. I do hope that your dialogue efforts will be successful in the end and that we will then have to deplore less shortcomings and less that everything is far from being perfect in Tanzania. No, 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 the situation is very sincere still. It's a very difficult situation and we expect the European Union to do what we have to do in these kind of cases. So good luck for that and we will see you soon again in the European Parliament. Rest assured. Thank you. Colleagues, we have 30 minutes until the next item, so I would suggest that we 
take a little break, and at three o'clock we will have a joint meeting with our DIVI colleagues on the situation in Ethiopia. Thank you.